Hey guys, how's it going? It's Cody here with CycleTravelOverload.com and in today's video we're going to be talking about these things. Do you know what they are? They're called butterfly bars or trekking bars, butterfly handlebars, whatever you want to call them. I have tested these bars now for I think over def definitely over 5,000 kilometers. I think it's almost up to 7,000, 7,500 kilometers I've been riding with these bars. I had them on my Surly, as you can see here, which I now have drop bars on, but I did have these butterfly bars set up on this rig over here. And in today's video, I'm just going to talk to you guys about like all the reasons why maybe you should consider some bars like this for your touring bike setup, and also some things to consider to see if these bars may be right for you, because they also may not be right for you. As you can tell, my bars have taken quite a beating. I've just like duct taped it up and stuff like that. So first off, let's maybe talk about like why you would want to consider these bars in the first place. So when they're set up on your bike, they allow for more of an upright position, which also helps with your posture. I find on the drop bars, most of the time you're in a racing position where you're hunched over. With these trekking bars, they're much more upright. So obviously they're not like that. They're more sort of like this and you get kind of a, a really good posture when you're riding on the bike. And this is great for long tours because like man if you've got if you're hunched down all the time like every day when you're riding you get a real sore back eventually it catches up to you and stuff so this is really good for like keeping a really good posture just looking after your back this also transitions into comfort it is much more comfortable i have found using these bars compared to drop bars while also it provides a heap of hand positions so this is probably the most common hand position that i use when I'm using them, only because that's where the brakes are, right? But most often, like, when you're riding downhill, it's probably more comfortable to put your hands up here, and then you got, like, a position here, and then you can also do this, which is different from that, and then you've got this one, which is, like, a full stretch. You can really stretch your arms out as well while you're riding, and then you can even do this, and then you can even, like, lean down into the bars as well. You could probably even add some aero bars and, like, do aero bars there. There's just like a huge variety of hand positions that is great for long tours again because you're changing it up. Like if you just got flat bars and you're riding like on a long tour, which is not recommended, you're constantly pressurizing your hands in one position. It's just good to have such a variety of hand positions. Also, I found when riding on like rough surfaces, it provides like a little bit better handling on the bike. One other thing that I kind of like about these bars is that they are pretty cheap as well. Like. This bar is the brand BBB. Only cost me like, I think like $30. And it just came with the bar. And it was quite affordable, like compared to like some of the other bars out there. Like you got those, I think it's Velo Crazy Bars, whatever they are. They're like $80, $100 plus bars. These are like a simple bar that I only paid like 30 bucks for. So what I've got is some notes here of some things that you may want to consider about these bars. Um, one of them is they're sort of a bit difficult or cumbersome, however you want to say it, to mount like bike lights. Sometimes because of the curvature of the bar can be a little tricky just to get them to stay there properly. Um, but having that said, considering there's so much real estate on this bar, you can like mount like heaps of gadgets, lights, bells and whistles, anything you really want. like. There's just so much room to mount heaps of stuff on it. Also, another thing to consider, if you get the bars that have the foam grip, when the grip gets wet, like if you're camping overnight and it rains, that foam, as expected, absorbs that water. So when you go to use them the next day, it could be smelly and it might be a little bit uncomfortable to ride because it's like all mushy and wet handlebar. So probably your best bet with these bars is to do the grip tape. Then also having that said, I found that if I didn't do a really good job of getting the grip tape on, and even if I did do a good job, most often than not, like it would, it was a lot easier for the bar tape to come off because of the curvature of the bar. This is also another one. Um, and I had to sort of get over this issue myself was that they're kind of a bit ugly. They're not the best looking bars out there and they kind of make your bike, in my opinion, look a bit dorky. But having that said, like, you shouldn't really care what people think. And for me, it was more of a thing of, uh, 
function over form, if that makes sense. So it's more about like how this is going to help me and how it's going to better my biking experience rather than looks. Also, I want to go back to the hand positions and more specifically when riding downhill, like I mentioned before, my most comfortable position was up here, riding the downs on the downhills. But a little sort of thing to consider is that like the brakes are here. So you kind of need to ride in this position to put the brakes on and as you're going downhill, you need to brake, right? So I found I was up here and then I had to jump down here to put the brakes on, which was kind of annoying. Like maybe you could like add like little brakes here. So then when you're riding, you could just brake like that. That's one thing to consider if you are looking into these bars. Um, but yeah, that's just one thing that I found was a little annoying with these bars. And also on technical descents, when you're descending and you are riding in this position, um, the brakes feel sometimes a little bit too close together. If you are like used to riding the drop bars where the brakes are out a bit wider. That also took me a little bit to get used to. One thing to consider is you may need a longer stem because the edge of the bar here, when you turn, may hit the frame if the stem isn't long enough. So if you can imagine this stem was like a short stem or not so long, like when you turn, you probably clip the bar or your knees will hit like the end of the bar as well. Also, another thing I realized also is that like the position you're when you're riding on these bars is not at all for racing or like aerodynamics. So like if you get belted with a headwind, like it really slows you down. You can't get down to sort of escape that wind. You kind of have to cop it. And I also found when I was riding up the east coast of Australia, like out in some of the rural places out that way, I found when I had like road trains come past, like coming from that direction, that the wind, I would just cop it so bad. Like, because I guess like partly it was because I was in this upright riding position. Also, when, you, when you're looking into the bars, make sure that your stem clamp capabilities on your bike is gonna fit the diameter of the bar. But if you want some more details about my thoughts on these trekking bars, then check out my post that I did on uh, cycletraveloverload.com where I just share my experience and talk about uh, pretty much everything that I've learned from using these butterfly bars. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. If this video was helpful today, make sure to give me a thumbs up, drop some comments below, and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well to stay updated for more bicycle touring and bikepacking content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.